guys, so today I'm going to be doing a video on how to make a successful YouTube channel. I am just going to be talking about like how to get yourself out there in the YouTube community, not necessarily just how to like create the account, but how to make a YouTube channel successful. I'm going to be including topics like lighting, cameras, collabs, sponsoring, making money through YouTube, um, editing, filming, everything. Oh, and by the way, I got my hair unbraided. I'm not sure you can really see it because it's kind of bright right here, but I did, and happy about it because it looks pretty good. Yeah, okay. So, without further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to be talking about YouTube tips, like channel art, um, your username, sponsors, stuff like that. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is the username. This is very important when you first make your YouTube. It's what your subscribers will remember you by, and it's also what they will refer to you outside of YouTube. If a subscriber finds your channel and they love it, they're going to want to recommend it to their friends. But when they go to school and they recommend it to their friends, they're going to be referring to you as their YouTube name. So, let's say a new subscriber finds my channel and they go to school the next day, they're going to be like, Oh my gosh, last night I found the most amazing YouTube channel ever called LL Bells. Their friends will remember my username when they get home from school and look me up and they won't have trouble finding me because it's literally two words and it's there's no other channel with my name. It needs to be short, easy to say, unique, and it needs to describe your channel and what you're going to be talking about in your videos. I chose my username Ella Elwells because before I made my YouTube channel I had an, well I still have an Instagram and it's called Ella Elwells and that's what a lot of people know me by. Before I made this channel I was remotely popular on Instagram and I wanted my followers on Instagram to be able to find me easily. If they were to look me up on the internet as Ella Elbells, my YouTube would pop right up and I'd be right there. They would know it's me and it would just be, it's really easy to find. Speaking of Instagram, social media is very important when you make a YouTube channel. You're going to want to connect all your social medias to your YouTube channel. So if you have, if your YouTube channel is, um, Makeup by Sammy, you're going to want to make your Instagram and your Twitter and your Facebook Makeup by Sammy or something that your YouTube subscribers will know to search on Twitter when they're looking for you on Twitter. You're going to want to link your social medias everywhere. You can put it in your description, you can put it at the end of your videos like I do, you can put it under your channel art so there's a little space you can put links. Put it everywhere so everyone knows who you are and what your place is on the internet. People can search you easily that way and they'll know who you are and they'll know where to look for you. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is channel banners. This is also a really important thing when you first make your YouTube. When you make your YouTube it comes with a default banner and I'm pretty sure it's just a blue banner. This is the thing right under your profile picture on your YouTube, right here, and it's usually just a blank when you first get your YouTube. Obviously you're going to want to change that and make it something that describes your channel. That will intrigue subscribers when they look at your channel and they'll be like, oh my gosh, that's really cool, I want to check this girl out or I want to check this guy out. Besides your username, channel banners and channel art is the most important thing in intriguing a subscriber to your channel. It is the first thing they look at when they look at your channel. It's the main thing, the most colorful thing on your channel, or at least it should be. Once you replace that default banner, make it something that describes your channel and expresses what your channel is about. I like unicorns, I like pink, and that is something that really describes me and most, for the most part, it also describes my channel. So I have that in my channel art. I also have my username up there so people can just see it when they first open the channel. Since the channel art is the first thing you see, Putting your username there will help them remember your channel and have a visual picture in their mind of what your channel is and they can remember it and refer it back to it when they're looking for a video. Oh my god, channel banners, so important. Do not, don't forget them. I edited my channel banner on Adobe Photoshop, but there are also tons of websites and other places you can make those too. I'm not sure what the websites are, what the websites are called, but I'm sure you can search it up. And you can even make it on your iPhone, on like apps like Pickstitch and Fonto. You can make a channel banner on that. So now that your channel is all set up with your YouTube name and your channel art, you're going to want to start posting videos. This, believe it or not, is not the most important thing, but it is important when you post and like your consistency of posting. You're not going to want to post five times a day and then not post for five weeks. 
post on a consistent rate, like every other day, every day, two times a week, three times a week, one time a week. I post every single Monday, once a week, and my subscribers, they know that I'm going to post that day, and they expect me to post that day, so they're always looking in their subscription box on Mondays for my videos. That guarantees me a, a consistent view count and stuff like that. That will really help you get views if you're consistent. Also, posting often when you first start will help you get noticed because your videos will be in the suggestion box for more videos and people will see your videos. Honestly, the more you post, the more they'll get noticed. The mistake I made when I first started YouTube is I posted twice a week, like for two weeks, and then I didn't post for three months. And my channel didn't get any subscribers for three months because no one knew where I was. They didn't know where I, they didn't know like what even I was doing. And that was a mistake because I didn't gain any subscribers that time. Technically, I've had my channel for a year, but I haven't, I didn't really start YouTube until maybe seven months ago. Not even, maybe even less. If I had kept a consistent posting rate over that year time, I would have had like 10,000 subscribers by now. Maybe even more, but I won't know because I didn't keep that consistent rate, which I am definitely suggesting that you guys do. It will help a ton. When you start posting videos, you're going to start realizing that other people's videos, they have ads and they're making money off it somehow. And you might wonder how they're doing it. This is because they modernize their videos, and I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong, but you'll get the idea. So basically, when you modernize your video, you are agreeing to have ads on your video. So basically, all you have to do to modernize your videos is, I think you go to, um... You go to video manager and you go to channel settings and once you're there you see that you scroll down you see there's a thing called modernizing and you click on that and you can instantly sign up with AdSense and once you do that you can see that over a few weeks you'll start making money once people start viewing your videos and the more views you get the more money you'll get. I've only done this for about a month now and I've made almost $200 so this is pretty good money. I mean, it's fun. It's making you money. It's it's pretty great. Another way to make YouTube a career and like make get yourself out there and get you like involved with businesses is sponsoring. Once you start getting a decent amount of subscribers and views, businesses will start contacting you. So make sure you have a business email in the descriptions of every video you every video you have and also in the about section on your channel so when businesses see your channel and they like you they will contact you and you and businesses will be coming to you they will want you to sponsor them to advertise their products on your channel the mistake you can make when signing with um, a sponsorship is doing this with companies that you don't like or you don't even know what they are at least for me a lot of companies that are based in like China have been contacting me and they have really cute clothes and stuff but it's China you don't know what to expect it's far away things could get damaged you could get you could have some problems with a damaged sponsoring good that you can't you can't show on your channel because it's broken and that's why you want to stick with you want to stick with companies in the US or at least in your country and also companies that you know you're going to like and you know that your subscribers will like. You have to like the product you're sponsoring. If you don't like it, your subscribers, they probably won't like it. So you have to make sure that you like the company that is, want, uh, is wanting you to sponsor them. And that is the only way you can be successful with sponsoring, is to like the company that is sponsoring you. If they ask you to review the product, review it honestly. And even if you if you don't like it, send it back to them. Tell them it's not your taste. You don't like it, and most li most likely they will let you return it to them. Yeah, it might cost you two dollars postage, but you don't want to review a product to your subscribers that you don't like. It's just not going to work out. Now moving on to collabs. Oh my gosh, they will get you so far in YouTube. You can make awesome friends through collabs. You can make awesome videos through th through collabs and you can get a ton more subscribers through collabs. Basically, collabs are just you talking with another YouTuber, um, combining an idea you both have and making two videos out of it. And during this process, you will get you will get subscribers that already like that already like your type of channel, they already like your type of video because when you do a collab, you usually do this collab with 
a person with the same type of channel as you, has the same amount of subscribers as you, and just someone who is a lot like you. So you know their subscribers will like you when they hear about you. Collab videos are just videos that relate to each other. They have the same topic, but you and this person you're doing the collab with, you're both um, presenting this topic differently. Some good topics for collab videos are like room tours, seasonal outfit ideas, seasonal um, recipes. You can even do like a you can even do like um, a type of makeup tutorial. If it's near Fourth of July, you can each do a Fourth of July makeup look, and they'll both be the same topic, but they'll both be different looks. So if your subscribers view your video and they'll see that your video is collab with that other person. They'll look at their video too to see two ideas on the same topic. And this is just an awesome way to get subscribers. And you can make the greatest friends through this. The last thing I'm going to be talking about in YouTube tips is interact with your subscribers. So even if you get a hundred comments on a video, try your best to, to reply to each and every one of them. Even if it's like a two word response, it will mean a lot to your subscribers. And it will tell them that you care about them, that you're listening to what they have to say about your video and that you really care about their comments. It will just instantly create this bond between you and your subscribers that will just make you more real to them and not just a person on a screen. Now we're going to be moving on to filming. This is, oh my gosh, the quality of your videos, the cameras you use, the lenses you use, the lighting you use. This is all so important when filming a video. It contributes everything. When your subscribers see a video, they they look at the video quality. And if it's a bad video quality, if the lighting is bad, you can't you can't hear what they're saying. They won't keep watching the video. They'll click on another video and they'll just leave your video like it's trash. It's nothing to them. So make sure your video quality is good. Even if you can't afford an awesome camera, there are ways you can make your videos appealing to others. One is talking loud enough so they can hear you. Like, I wouldn't talk to my friends this loud. I'm sort of screaming right now, and my whole house can probably hear me. But to you, it's totally normal, and you can hear everything I'm saying. Now, I have, like, a fat tongue. Like, I mumble a lot. Not, I don't li literally have a fat tongue, but I mumble a lot. And I have trouble speaking fast, and it's, like, it's something that I struggle with. But when I film, I will film the same phrase over and over again until I can enunciate the words the way I want it and a way so you guys can hear them and so you won't be confused when I'm talking. And this just, it helps your subscribers understand what you're saying, obviously, and that will just give you a professional feel when your, when your subscribers are watching you. Another inexpensive way to make your videos a better quality is having good lighting. So right now I'm sitting in front of the window. The camera is in front of the window and the window is facing me. So light from outside is on me. I am filming around, um, it's 3 o'clock right now. This is actually a little later than I usually film because as you can see it's a little bit too bright right now. But the thing is, the sun is not shining right on me. It is behind my window but the light from the sun is still here. You don't want the sun to be directly on you or you'll be squinting and you'll, you'll be like white and the background will be like way too bright. It's just not going to work. Depending on where you live, the time you, might, the time you can film is different. I personally like to film between 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock and the only reason I'm not filming that time today is because my camera died. By the way, always charge your camera, very important, because you don't want to die in the middle of filming like that happened to me. So anyway, you want the light to be shining on you, but not to be directly on you. And as you can see, it gives a really natural lighting to my face, and you can see everything. And it's it's a lot cheaper than buying than buying five hundred dollars studio lighting. Okay, so now the part that a lot of you have probably been waiting for is camera talk and lenses. This is by far the best part of making a video: is finding the perfect camera and the perfect lens that just looks most professional. The camera I use is the Canon Rebel T5i. The thing about the T5i is it is just like the T3i and the T4i. They are this, basically the same camera just by a few little te technical mechanical stuff that you can't even tell it's different. The mistake I made is that I bought the T5i when really I could have just opted for the T3i not knowing that they were the exact same camera. 
So I kind of wasted about $200, but I'm going to warn you guys, if you want the T5i, don't. Get the T3i and save on that. And also, I'd recommend just buying a body. Don't use the, the kit lens. The kit lenses, they suck. They don't even work. I mean, they work, but there's no depth to the picture. I mean, if I were using a kit lens right now, there would not be blurry background behind me. It would all be in focus. There would be no depth to the picture. It wouldn't look professional, and it would just ruin the whole quality of the video. If I were you guys, I would buy the body of a T3i. No kit lens, just the body of the camera. And invest in a Sigma. Not even a Sigma. I mean, really, you can buy any other lens besides a kit lens. But what I would recommend is the Sigma 30mm f-stop 1.4 lens it is the lens I'm using right now and it gives such an amazing professional look to the picture it gives really nice blurry background which is um, props to the f-stop which is a 1.4 the lower the one the, the lower the f-stop is the more blurry the background will be so if I were to buy a 1.2 that you wouldn't even be able to see anything in the background it'd be so blurred the best I think the best focal length for filming is a 30 millimeter, and for the best quality, um, I would get a 1.4 or 1.8 f-stop. Those are pretty awesome lenses, and it will probably be the best investment you will make for a YouTube video. I mean, really, getting this lens has changed how my YouTube video, how my YouTube has grown. Like before this, before I bought this lens, I maybe gained a thousand subscribers a month, and now I'm gaining. A thousand subscribers a week now that I got this new lens and this amazing quality which I mean it will get you so far in the YouTube world I mean guys please if you can invest in it get this it is amazing okay so now moving on to music which I think a lot of you guys have been wondering about is how to not get your music your music copyrighted you might have noticed that if you buy like a popular song from iTunes like on the top 50 list and you upload it in a video you will get a little sign that says acknowledge third party content. This means that the song is copyrighted and the artist of this song does not want you to be using their songs in YouTube videos without their permission. The thing is with these popular artists you pretty much can get permission unless you can somehow find their email of their manager and get in contact with them which will be pretty hard so I mean you really can't use those type of songs in, their, in your videos if you don't want that copyright claim. Now you may probably think that it's not that big of a deal to get a copyright notice because nothing really happens but I mean actually it does. If you have a copyright notice in your video depending on the song it may not allow some people from certain states or certain countries or even on certain devices to view your, to view your video. If not everyone can view your video then it, it will affect your views so make sure that you don't use copyrighted songs so everyone can view your video. This also affects your videos because it won't it won't allow you to modernize your videos so you won't make money on that video. So at all costs, avoid getting copyrighted music. The alternative to that um, in not finding copyrighted music is finding uh, artists on YouTube who do cover songs and usually they have their business email in their on their channel somewhere and all you have to do is contact them and say that say who you are and that you want to use their music in your video and they will most likely say yes with as long as you give them credit and that way you can you can use the music in the, in your video and if you do get a copyright notice you can say dispute and say that you have written permission from the artist and that copyright notice will go away completely and you can mop out your video and all that stuff and it will be like it's never there if you don't want to use a cover song, you can also go to some websites that sell free stock stock footage music, like um, royalty free music, and SoundCloud, and like places like that. Some of them are free, but a lot of times you have to pay for the for those types of music, which is why I don't usually use stock music because it costs money. But if you if you don't want to use a cover song, you might have to get something like that. Okay, so this is probably the second most requested part of this video is editing. Okay, so when I edit my videos, I use Final Cut Pro and sometimes iMovie. Um, when I first started out, I used iMovie, which was okay, but for me, it glitched a lot. That might just that could just be my computer, but for me, it did glitch a lot. I still use it sometimes though. When I'm doing like voiceovers, I use iMovie, and when I'm adding music, I use iMovie but everything else is Final Cut Pro. The thing about iMovie, I mean, 
iMovie is I think $20 or a little bit above that maybe and Final Cut Pro is $300 so only get Final Cut Pro if you're like really serious about YouTube. Final Cut Pro is just like an upgraded, more professional version of iMovie. The thing about Final Cut Pro and iMovie is you can get almost any question you have answered. Just search whatever question you have on YouTube. Like, um, if you don't, if you want to know how to do, if if you want to know how to add music into an iMovie video, just search it on YouTube. Be like, adding music into iMovie, and tons of videos will come up and tutorials on how to do that. So really, if you have any questions on iMovie or Final Cut Pro, YouTube, just search it, you will get your answer. I swear to God, it will be there. Personally, I like Final Cut Pro better because it has more um, options for creativity because you can personalize it better, but it is pretty confusing. It's almost too much, but once you get the hang of it, it's, it's fun and you can make some awesome videos. So this is kind of in the filming category, but kind of in the editing, but um... You, if you guys have noticed, a lot of like YouTubers have either like an intro thing, like Connor Franta, he has that, um, he has like a few seconds of what it, whatever his video is, then he has that little circle that rolls in with the CF on it. That's what like an intro is, and then the, what's, outro? I'm not sure what you call it. The ending of the video that almost all YouTubers have is like, where they have like, um, some upbeat music in the end, and like, all their social medias on the screen and they have like the previous video on the screen. That is what I would call an outro. I'm pretty sure that's not a word but I'm making that up and that's what I call it. And this will help your viewers like get more involved with you. I mean that sounds really wrong. But they like they can really get to know you better because once they watch your video that will come right up and they'll be like, ooh she's another video. Ooh I'm gonna check out her Instagram. I'm gonna check out her Twitter. I'm gonna check out like all of her videos because it's right there in front of them. All they, have, all they have to do is click on the screen and they can just go right to it and for lazy for lazy viewers you will get a lot of views out of that. My outro is just a little clip of my previous video, my Instagram, and also a little subscribe button and I made that using Final Cut Pro and I am not sure if you can do that on iMovie I and mean, if you're really good at iMovie I think you can make it on iMovie but Final Cut Pro might be easier for making something like mine. Okay, so, um, moving on to, uh, so, moving on to, ooh, thumbnails. I love thumbnails. That is the first thing your viewers will see before they click on your video, and that is, like, really what they use to decide if they want to watch it or they don't want to watch it. So, right under, um, the choices that YouTube has picked for you for thumbnails, um, if you qualify for custom thumbnail, it says custom thumbnail. Just click on that and you can pick your own thumbnail from any pictures on your desktop. After I finish filming the video, I take a little picture with my camera like, ting, and have like text on the side of my head that says like what the video is or something like that. And I just edit that on Photoshop with some cool text or some, something like that or maybe I morph my background or something cool. And I do that all on Adobe Photoshop and that is how I do my thumbnails. Now that we're coming to an end to this video, I'm going to answer some of your specific questions that you asked me yesterday over Instagram, and yeah. So the first question is, what would be a good idea for a first video? For a first video, I would recommend doing a morning routine or a night routine video, because in my experience with like even my channel and, and other YouTubers' channels, morning routines and night routines are usually their most viewed videos. So if you want to start off with like a high note and get some subscribers from your first video, I would recommend a morning routine video. And also, those are really fun to film. Like, morning routines are my favorite videos to film. Like, no joke. Really fun. Another good video you can do is a really simple video, like how to curl hair. If anyone is wondering, like, how to curl hair, they will most likely look it up on the internet. And first thing that will come up is a YouTube video. And if your video is that a video, it will get you a lot of views and subscribers and that is a great way to get started. Just to do like a simple video like how to and that if you don't want to do morning routine that is the way to go. The next question is how do you do a voiceover? I wasn't originally going to answer this question because it was kind of answered in my video that you could just search on the internet but a lot of people ask this like a ton of people ask this. Just click on the icons right here and you will be referred to a link that is a tutorial for 
iMovie and um, Final Cut Pro on how to do voiceovers on those two applications. So just click on that if you want to know how to do a voiceover. Yeah. And the last question of the video is, how do you convince your parents to let you have a YouTube channel? So for me, I was about 12 at the time, so I wasn't even old enough for YouTube. Because I am I think you actually have to be 13 for YouTube. I'm not 100% sure though. I mean, that could be totally wrong, but I think so. So I was a, I was pretty young when I started YouTube. I was, I think I like just turned 12. Not even. No, I was like 12 and a half. Still, I was, I was pretty young. I was like over a year ago. And I asked my parents if I could have a YouTube channel and they, of course, said no because I was putting myself out there on the internet already with Instagram. And they didn't want me to like be talking and people would like see that I'm so young because in my Instagram photos you can't tell that I'm so young usually because you can't see how tall I am, you can't see how high my voice is, but if I did, my parents thought that if I did a YouTube video, people would see that I'm young and that I'm vulnerable and I mean I would attract a 50 year old pedophile which is what all parents would think when their kids start on social media. So that was an interesting conversation with my parents. But anyway, it took a while, but I eventually worked towards getting a YouTube channel. And once I did, of course I had some like um, rules I had to follow. Like I couldn't tell you guys my real last name. I couldn't tell you guys my address. I couldn't show any personal family photos in the background or anything like that. But besides that, once I negotiated the rules with my parents, they, they let me do it. Just ensure your parents that you'll, you will be safe. You won't give your number out to strange guys. You won't give your address out to people. You won't to, like try to meet anyone that you don't know through the internet. And you won't and you won't tell people your full name. Like that is the one thing my parents were worried about. That people would find out my last name and that um, they would stalk me, something like that. So just ensure your parents that you won't expose that type of information to your viewers and subscribers and that you're going to be safe on the internet and that is the most important thing that your parents will worry about and that is important to you when you're on the internet. So I mean that's my advice if you want to try to convince your parents but I mean if they say no don't push it guys. I mean don't annoy your parents too much even though I totally did that. So that is pretty much all I have to say for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it wasn't too long even though I said a lot of stuff. I hope I got some information across to you guys and I gave you an insight on how to get into YouTube in a safe way and not like waste your time and your money. So make sure you guys subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And also comment below if you want to be a YouTuber because I would love to see you guys' videos once you start getting into YouTube and I hope you guys I hope you guys use these tips. And yeah.